we can use the column method to multiply decimals quite easily. We set the numbers out in the same way as if we were using whole numbers. 2.3 multiplied by 4. I'm going to put the longer number, one with the more digits on the top, and multiplied by 4. Now the only thing I've done differently here is I've not lined my four units up with the two units. Instead I've kept my calculation so that it looks like it would normally look with the right hand side lined up. So I'm multiplying by this digit and I'm saying 4 multiplied by 3. Okay, it's in my tenths column but I'm still saying 4 multiplied by 3. 4 multiplied by 3 is 12. So I'm going to write down the 2 and I'm going to carry the 1 into my next column. Now, this was my tenths. So 4 multiplied by 3 in my tenths column would actually give me 12 tenths. If I've got 12 tenths, that's like one whole one and two tenths. But actually, so long as we put the decimal point in after we've multiplied our tenths, we can see it's just in the same place. We don't need to worry about that. 4 times 3 is 12, so we write the 2 and carry the 1. 4 times 2 is 8. And I've got that extra one to add on, so my answer is 9.2. So if I have tenths in the question, I'm going to have tenths in the answer as well. So let's try another calculation involving decimals. 5 multiplied by 3.24. So again I'm going to look at the longest number, not necessarily the largest number but the longest, the one with the most digits, to write down first. 3.24. And I'm going to multiply by 5. So again I'm keeping the same look from my column method where this single digit is right over on the right hand side. And then I start here now in my hundreds column and I say 5 times 4 is 20. So I'm going to write down the 0 and I'm going to have the 2. So I can either carry it up here or down here. I'm going to put it up here because if we're doing long multiplication later, that keeps it out of the way. So 5 times 4 is 20. And then moving on, 5 times 2 is 10. Add on 2 is 12. And there's my 12. But I know this time I've got my decimal point here. And 5 multiplied by 3 is 15, add on the extra one is 16, 16.20, which we would normally write as 16.2. We don't need the 0, but we can see when we've worked this out that we've got two digits here after our decimal point, we've got tenths and hundredths. And in our calculating the answer, we've also got two digits here after our decimal point. And that's going to be important to remember when we come on to long multiplication with decimals.